As you're settling in, I'm Rogers Anderson, the Williamson County Mayor. On the inside of the horseshoe of tables are the different jurisdiction municipalities um, that we have in our county. All six cities are represented along with our um, different elements. I'm gonna go around the tables so that you know uh, each of the jurisdictions and their name and you can put a face uh, with the name, so you can watch that. Uh, in in a few minutes, we're going to do our public speaking, uh, public sector side of it. Those that would like to speak, there's a sign-up sheet back here on the corner on the table. Uh, if you desire to <clears throat> to speak during this session, you will make your way around to my left here by the WTCV. They are view. They are taping the show today. It will be a Available later, Creed, on uh, YouTube. Yeah, it'll be on YouTube and available on the planning uh, website for the growth plan updates. If you didn't hear him, it'll be available on YouTube and on the planning uh, growth side of our website. So when you come up here, if you would watch your step, there's some chairs over here by the piano come up, and we're keeping everyone here so that we can... Uh, tape it and you can hear it on YouTube. All right. With that in mind, I'm, I will start over here. Who's behind? Who's beside you, Joe? I'm being blocked. Okay. If you're on the committee, uh, we would ask that you identify yourself and the area that you represent. And we'll start with uh, County Commissioner Betsy Hester. I'm not on the committee, but I do represent, I'm Betsy Hester, and I represent uh, District 2, and I've worked on planning for several years, even before I was elected. Thank you. Hey, Creed, are these mics working? Uh, they, they should. Uh, I'm not sure, though. Joe? My name is Joe Horn. I'm a community development director for the county, and I am not on the committee. Thank you. Jason Golden, superintendent for Williamson County Schools. I'm on the committee as the representative for the largest school district in the county. Pam Kowski, city administrator, Spring Hill, and I'm not the representative for Spring Hill. Patrick Carter, I'm the city attorney for Spring Hill and Fairview. Andrew Reynolds, town attorney, Thompson Station. I'm Michael Wood. I'm the Community Economic Development Director for the Town of Thompson Session. Brian Stafford, I'm Mayor of Thompson Session. Ethan Greer, City Planner for the City of Fairview. Lisa Anderson, I'm the Mayor of the City of Fairview, Tennessee. Eric Dale, Development Engineer, Middle Tennessee Lake. Good morning, I'm Jim Hagman. I am the Mayor of Spring Hill, and I am on the committee. Thank you. Good morning, Kristen Corn, City Attorney for Brentwood. Good morning, I'm Mark Gorman, the Mayor of Brentwood and the Vice Chair of this committee. Good morning, uh, Bob Lehman, I'm the Planning and Coach Director for the City of Brentwood. John Shore on the committee uh, for Franklin. Shauna Billingsley, I'm the City Attorney for Franklin. Emily Wright, I'm the Planning Director for City of Franklin. Ken Moore, I'm the mayor of the city of Franklin I'm on the committee. Eric Skokie, Franklin City Administrator, also on the committee is the representative of the Franklin Water Management Department, which is the largest municipally on the beach Haley Gallick, I'm the mayor of the town of Hillsville. Victor Light, town manager for town of Hillsville. Brent Schultz, uh, director of planning for town of Hillsville. I'm Judy Herbert, I'm 2nd District County Commissioner, and I'm on the committee. Uh, Chaz Morton, 9th District County Commissioner, also on the committee. Jeff Mosley, Williamson County Attorney. Greg Sanford, County Commissioner, District 5, I'm now on the committee. Mike Madison, I'm Planning Director for Williamson County. Christy Branson, I'm the Attorney for the County for Planning and
So, we've got some latecomers coming in just to highlight um, the processes we'll be going through today. All of the people up in the horseshoe section are either on the committee or county commissioners so they can get a better handle uh, on their area they're representing. Again, the sign-up sheet is on the back side over here. I'm gonna go walk over there or ask Eric to pull that and hand that to me. There will be 30 minutes of public comment. The 30 minutes of public comment can come in a fashion so that all of you will have an opportunity to speak that wanna speak, but I would recommend that you keep your remarks to three minutes, which will give us 10 people in which to speak. Greg will be uh, offering uh, the time slot and he will notify me. And at that time, your three minutes are up, we'll ask you to round it, round it off. Uh, we'll ask him to give you a 30 second warning so that you know that the three minutes is about up. At the end of 30 minutes, the committee will begin the process of listening and uh, to the different municipalities, the cities and the counties of which we are all represented. But before we get going to the actual public uh, comment section, I'm going to ask Greg uh, to come up and kind of give you a snapshot of what we have been working on for well over a good year uh, on the different uh, areas that you'll be seeing. Most of the slides you will see today uh, will show some of the cities and the, and the areas that they're talking about. Greg, would you please? Thank you, Mayor. Um, my name is Greg Dale. I'm with the firm uh, McBride Dale Clarion. We're a planning consulting firm that has worked in the county for off and on for uh, 10 plus years. Um, I was the project manager for the county's comprehensive plan, and I'll explain where that fits into this process here in just a minute. But then as a result of that, this process grew out of that. I'll explain that also. Uh, uh, but I was asked to serve as a facilitator for this process, and that's been my job working with the, uh, the, the county and the city and the town staffs and others to help facilitate this process. So I'll be helping to uh, run the, the discussions here today. But the mayor asked me to give uh, just a little bit of background, particularly since we have a number of citizens who've not been involved in this process and maybe to refresh everybody's memory. Um, so this starts with the idea that in state law, there is a requirement that counties identify growth boundaries. And then the, 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 the reason for that is should be pretty self-explanatory, and that is to identify areas that are appropriate for growth where communities can provide public services and facilities in those areas and to generally manage the future growth that's, that's expected in the, in the, in the future. Um, it identifies a 20 year time frame within which we're being asked to, to think. Um, and those growth boundaries were initially established well over 20 years ago. As a result of the county's comprehensive plan a couple of years ago, one of the recommendations among many, one of the recommendations that came out of that was to revisit those growth plan areas. Obviously something that happened 20 years ago uh, runs the risk of not being current anymore. So the county and the leadership from the cities and towns uh, and the other agencies that are involved agreed to open, reopen that process and re-examine those growth boundaries. Uh, we have been at this for more than, well, more than a year, it's probably more like two years now of, of, a, of a process that began with a coordinating committee that had many of the same representatives that you see on this, on this group. Uh, that worked together and whose planning staffs in particular worked together to study growth trends, to look at growth forecasts, to identify tentative growth boundaries. Uh, each of the jurisdictions engaged in community outreach at the beginning of the process. Uh, each, of the each of the communities has been reporting back to the advisory group, uh, has been engaged with their own respective elected officials and, and have recently gone through public hearings, formal public hearings uh, in, in the process. So that's where we are in the process now. What you're going to hear today is reports from each jurisdiction about their proposed growth boundaries. We've got uh, seven jurisdictions in all, six cities and towns and the county that has their own version of growth areas, which are called uh, 
uh, plan growth areas. It's a little bit different terminology in state law. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's the same concept. So um, based on what we hear today, uh, then the next step will be to, again, continue to work with your staffs at, 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 the, at the coordinating committee, come back in September and present a draft plan. And one of the things I want to emphasize to the coordinating committee and to the citizens is there, there are not expected to be any decisions made today. We're hoping you provide input. We're hoping that we can identify areas where there appears to be tentative consensus and see if we can narrow down issues that we need to look at further. But there will be no decision made today. I'll explain a little bit more what that timing is when we get to that, but I just wanted to set that stage. Uh, Mayor, does that do what you what? Great, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, just a couple of house cleaning, uh, cleaning items. Uh, if you have a cell phone, would you silence it so that we're not interrupted with that? In the event you need to go to the restrooms, they're down the hall, um, just out past the fo foyer on the right-hand side. So with that being said, we have um, 13 people signed up. So in order to get 13 people in, someone's going to have to ch uh, chisel away at their remarks. So the first one that I have listed here, and I apologize for any of these names I butcher, will be Mr. Justin Landing at 1725 Barker, uh, Barker Road. Mr. Landing, if you'll make your way up, Thompson Station. And then following him, I'll put two in an order. There's probably a seat over there. The next one will be Adam Melcher. And then following that will be Dana Frick. Mr. Lanning. And I would ask that all of you try to lean into the mic as best you can so we can get this tape. Thank you, Rogers. Um, Justin Lanning, 1725 Barker Road, Thompson Station, here representing more than 80 folks that asked me to speak on their behalf uh, in your consideration of removing the Northwest Spring Hill UGB. Um, we totally appreciate all the factors that come into um, planning and all the variables that do. Um, I know you're very familiar with Public Chapter 707 where the Lieutenant Governor and Senators uh, commissioned a report. And that report came back refining policy saying that the burden of reasonableness and necessity must be carried. That then, where we're here today, uh, Tennessee Code 658 states to identify a territory that a reasonable and prudent person would have plans for. Uh, and we know that reasonable and prudent, everybody knows is a very legally accepted term that defines and helps you determine negligence. So I just wanna read for you quotes from six of the nine voting BOMA members of Spring Hill that's recorded on, on July 17th, as well as the city administrator and the city attorney. Kasky, I personally don't see any future where we're going to do any development out there. Many of the audience members who spoke are accurate. We have other fish to fry in the community. Kasky, we have no issues or desires to go out there. The cost of expanding infrastructure out there is completely out of any thoughts that we might have. Hagman, honestly, I don't see why this has to be done right now. I'm going to go with your recommendation and vote not to support this based on your testimonies. Fuqua, if denial is being discussed, I'm leaning to having the staff alter the map and defer for two weeks. Uh, Vice Mayor Palmroy, uh, we can amend it, change it, expand it, reduce it. If we were to reduce it, would that cause problems at the county level? Kasky, if we, if, if we try to reduce it, it would likely not cause problems. She continued, if we reduce it, I don't think we'd have to go back through a whole lot of rigmarole with the county level, but I'm not positive. Linville, we don't know where growth is gonna happen. I think as we've heard tonight, it's probably unlikely to happen on the west side of the UGB. Alderman Murray, if we decide to remove the Northwest UGB, um, would it have a negative effect on the water basin north and south? Carter's response, I don't think it would necessarily be negative. It doesn't have to be done right now. So with those quotes alone, I think we can see that reasonableness, necessity, and prudence have not been met. Also, for those of you on the committees, I'm sending you an email that has a 39 packet, 39 page packet. Um, and inside of that has many, many other reasons we'd love to discuss with you. So we appreciate all you're doing. We appreciate your consideration of removing the Northwest Spring Hill proposed UGB. Thank you for your time. Next on the list to speak is Mr. Adam Melcher. 
I get it right? Yep. Can you hear me? All right, uh, Adam Melcher, Harpeth Woods Subdivision, um, esteemed officials of Williamson County. I stand before you carrying the voices and concerns of our fellow Williamson County residents who for too long have felt unheard and left in the dark. I seek your understanding and your empathy and above all your action. The heart of democracy is the idea that every voice is heard, considered and accounted for. And today I echo the sentiments of countless residents who feel their voices have been relegated to a mere whisper, if not entirely muted. Our communities are built on trust and understanding, trust in our elected officials, trust in due process, and the transparency of the decisions that affect our homes, our neighborhoods, and our way of life. So you can imagine our shock and frustration when many of us learned through word of mouth about Thompson Station's plans to include our neighborhood in their proposed UGB. This sharply contrasted with the affected residents under the city of Franklin, who I understand received mailed letters and the option to request removal if desired. So it's deeply troubling that the technical uh, glitches that have prevented our objections and concerns from being heard at more than one Thompson Station Planning Commission meeting, uh, a non-working microphone may seem like a minor issue, but it literally and metaphorically mutes the voice of democracy. The thought that the few can mute the voices of the many sound like something out of a third world country. And so, however, I urge you to review the video recordings of July 25th and August 22nd for reference. And if you can't hear the speakers during the meetings when the mic is muted, neither could we. So when asked why we were not notified via mail, like the affected Franklin residents, Judy Herbert was told there was an insufficient manpower to mail out the notifications. So if the picture painted during the following meeting is that of collaboration and transparency between the affected residents of Thompson Station's proposed UGB, let me set the record straight. This couldn't be further from the truth and we aren't the only ones who feel this way. A petition to allow us to be removed from the proposed UGB in less than a week has already garnered the equivalent of 5% of Thompson Station's entire population. How many more signatures do we need for our voices to be heard? So my question to the esteemed members of this meeting, if this was not an attempt to mute our collective voices and simply nothing more than a manpower issue, what are we doing here? Why are uncontested elected officials from a town we did not move to and not eligible to vote in making decisions that affect our quality of life without proper representation? Uh, so like all of you, our homes are our sanctuaries our safe havens. We have watched the county protect our way of life by limiting the number of homes and ensuring our countryside is protected. So if the post office controls zip codes and, the, and, and being in the UGB does not mean annexation, why are there so many angry residents? So the Dalai Lama says a lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity. Would you wanna let a sense of insecurity float above your sanctuary? So please, we request that by removing us from the UGB, this is the first step to rebuilding trust. And so today I appeal to Mayor Stover, Director Madison and the esteemed County Commissioners to remember the principles on which we were founded. And please extend us the same respect that the Cali and Macklemore residents and allow us to be removed from the proposed UGB. Thank you very much. Before you jump on, anyone, anyone uh, after, let's see, you're Dana. Yes. So Ms. Frick is going to speak, and then next after her will be Tenable Mercher, and then Alex Moore. Hi, my name is Dana Frick. I'd like to speak briefly about inconsistencies and transparencies. I represent the Indian Meadows subdivision off West Harpeth. So the inconsistency I mentioned has to do with the growth boundaries along West Harpeth. When I brought this attention to Thompson Station as a variance between their map and Franklin's, the response was, quote, the town and Franklin, along with the other jurisdictions, have worked over the past three years to synchronize all the existing and proposed maps. There are no discrepancy in the town's map. 
message from Thompson Station has always been this growth map planning is just due process, a done deal and routine. It's just a formality to have these public hearings. The message from Williamson County and Franklin is the public hearings are to serve as a point to pause to ensure are we doing thoughtful and best practice stewardship for land development in Williamson County. It's inconsistent what Thompson Station sends. You can even see this in their 2022, November 2022, Kimberly Horn major thoroughfare analysis on their website shows in multiple places that the West Harpeth Ranch parcel is already part of the Thompson Station UGB, as if it's an already a done deal. Also along transparency lines, Rogers Anderson did approve sewer service to six parcels of land along West Harpeth and did not have to be in Thompson Station's urban growth boundary to do so. This could remain in Williamson County. A1 developers use this as a window to get an extended 150 undeveloped acres out of Franklin's UGB so they could grab it into theirs. It was recently communicated that A1 does not intend to develop the West Harpeth land, but to sell to Tennessee Valley Homes. Jimmy Franks is owned by Tennessee Valley Homes, owner of Tennessee Valley, recently gave land to Thompson Stations for use in building their new offices. Such transparency of a donation slash conflict of interest should be taken into consideration when entrusting good faith stewardship of land development for Williamson County. It is in hands of this committee to plan for balanced growth while preserving rural character in Williamson County. We ask that you please keep this undeveloped area along West Harpeth under Williamson County management in order to preserve the rural character where active farms are within sight. Williamson County is where we chose with great consideration to live. Williamson County is a leadership that develops, delivers controlled growth that is consistent with the surrounding properties. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Frank. Uh, ten tenable? It's Tenniel. Like the captain of <laughs> You have to be a certain age to know what that is. <laughs> Hi there, I am Tenille Melcher. My husband just spoke a couple minutes ago, so I'm actually gonna cut down a lot of my speech because he already stole most of the stuff that I was gonna talk about. So my name is Tenille and I reside in the Harpeth Wood subdivision of Franklin. I am grateful for the opportunity to address the assembly and the distinguished county and city officials today. I am not a public speaker, this is actually my first time, so if I pass out or throw up, I apologize. When we found out through word of mouth that our neighborhood, um, that, or sorry, that from a neighbor that Thompson Station had included us in the urban growth boundary, we, at first we were very upset, but then we felt a lot of relief when we went to Thompson Station and asked to be removed. They said, all you have to do is just ask us to be, that you wanna be removed. Perfect. So we went door to door. We had every single, oh, see, I'm getting nervous. Okay. We had every single resident of, of Harpeth Woods sign, notarize, and record our signatures along with letters stating that we want to be removed from, from their UGB as well as from the annexation. We then sent it sort of all of the packages certified mail to Thompson Station. They completely ignored them and did not pick them up. Ooh, I'm really getting nervous. Okay, so Judy Herbert, who we absolutely love, went down and hand delivered the package to Thompson Station and got a signed receipt for that. We thought everything was done. A year later, we find out that they actually did not remove us, but they removed other subdivisions like Cali or even Macklemore Road. So I went over there and asked them, how did you get removed? They said, we just asked. So fast forward, most of us went to the July 25th meeting. That was our very first time ever experiencing what Thompson Station really is about. So many of us gave passionate speech speeches and once again, we asked to be removed. Danielle Lane, who was representing Harpeth Woods at the time, gave and handed another copy of all the signatures to them, which I will be doing today as well. Um, when she, okay, she was the fourth speaker, by the way. The microphones were completely muted. We kept constantly asking them to turn it on. And then the the, one of the town commissioners told her, just go ahead. That conveniently was removed from the video that's online. They also removed the Pledge of Allegiance, Judy Herbert, Dana Frick, Kathy Green, and they started the video after they told us to just go ahead and continue. That is not okay. All right, so I'm gonna skip through what my husband talked about. Um, you got it. The most important thing I wanna say, honestly, is 
They just need to remove us. They don't add any value. Every resident that does not have sewer that is in the septic area, like east of, um, east of Lewisburg Pike and all of that, they hold no value to us. Please continue protecting us like you guys have been since day one. Protect our farmers, protect our land. That is why we're here. Thank you. Next, we have Alex Moore, excuse me, Moore, and then after her will be Kathy Green and then Thomas Stetson. Ms. Moore. Hello, thank you for allowing the residents living in Franklin's current urban growth boundary to speak today. My name is Aaliyah Moore and I live off of West Harpeth Road in the Laurel Hill subdivision. All who live on or adjacent to West Harpeth Road know how dangerous the road can be. There are two 90 degree turns on the five mile road with little to no shoulder. There are at least three extremely dangerous blind rises within the 1.5 mile area of the West Harpeth that is to be within Thompson Station's proposed new urban growth boundary. We are talking about a very small railroad road. There is a CSX railroad crossing that lacks a gate, has no lights, and has no audible warning that a train is approaching. Walkers, joggers, bike riders, and residents who must cross the road to check their mail all know of these zero visibility areas and are extremely hesitant because there is not enough visibility on areas of West Harpeth to safely move out of the way of oncoming traffic. On October 9th of 2021, I had this, a scare I wished on no person. I believed my child had been hit by a car at the top of our neighborhood, where one of the most dangerous blind hills on West Harpeth Road is, both our neighborhood entrance and blind hill being approximately one half mile from the A1 builder site. She was riding her bike at the top of our neighborhood when I heard sirens approaching loud and fast. I stepped out onto my porch at the same time emergency vehicles were screaming to a stop at the corner of West Harpeth Road and Aaron Lane. I can't ever know how fast my feet carried me out of West Harpeth Road. All I know is that when I saw the body of a man lying motionless and seemingly lifeless with a hole in the back of his skull flung like a rag doll under a truck, my first feeling was relief that it wasn't my daughter's body. This motorcyclist was hit so hard by a turning car into our neighborhood who had never even saw him approaching that his helmet came off of his head and his high top shoes both came off of his feet and landed over 25 feet away across West Harpeth Road. This man's shoes lay left behind in the grass for weeks. Not knowing if the victim still even lived, I placed a flower in his shoe where it had come to rest. It was all I could do. Now Tom Sensation has dollar signs in their eyes, sizing up the sleepy properties all alongside this stretch of West Harpeth Road. If following their track record, ready to see how many rooftops they could squeeze in per acre. We saw it with two farms when it was being planned and we are seeing it again. Y'all say you can't offer us sewage in the next 20 years, but that's not the whole story. You can offer us safety. As residents of Williamson County, this area relies on Wilco standing behind their goals for rural development. And I quote from Wilco's comprehensive land use plan 2040, quote, development will be directed away from rural areas and be compatible with existing neighborhoods and municipal plans, end quote. Let Thompson Station have a chance. Let's see what they propose. I've heard mentioned. We can't hold the land hostage, I've heard said. said. Well, the current residents affected by this proposed UGB change are not interested in gambling. How can Wilco ensure the current rural zoning remains intact in line with their own published development plan? One, keep entire proposed area of north and south sections of West Harpeth Road within the Franklin UGB. Two, require Thompson Station to keep current rural zoning intact if UGB changes since all of proposed areas are still within Williamson County. You can't ensure sewage in 20 years, but you can still ensure safety right now. Thank you. Again, thank you, Ms. Moore. Next is Kathy Green. After that would be Thomas Stetson, Stevenson. Yeah. And then after that is Tony Sharp. Ms. Green. Hi, I'm Kathy Green. I live in the Bethesda area. We own two properties there. Um, my family is multi-generational here, but we're not one of the people that don't want anyone else to move here. 
We just want some responsible growth. We would like for there to be roads widened along with all these subdivisions that keep getting approved. We first found out about an urban growth meeting um, in 2021. The first one, Thompson Station had already had. We knew nothing of it. So we all started getting the word out in the community. We emailed them. And the second meeting, conveniently, the COVID numbers were up. And they decided to only hold it virtual, despite us reaching out and offering to meet them on a pavilion, outside, wherever. Um, they just did it virtual. There were no comments allowed. So luckily, our wonderful commissioners, Judy Herbert and Betsy Hester, got up a petition that I believe had over 300 signatures telling them that we did not want to be in the urban growth boundary. And they did cut it back some, but both of our properties are still in their future um, expansion. And they don't really offer us anything. They, they don't have any services. There's no trash, there's no fire, there's no police. They pay for one police officer per shift from the county. The county does it. So then when they had these meetings recently, we went to the first one. I'm one of the speakers that do not appear on the video. I did speak at the meeting, but conveniently, I'm not saying, I guess there was a technical glitch. Um, Judy Herbert was cut out, our county commissioner, talking about the petition. So we feel like they don't hear us. They've approved this concert venue, which caused traffic headaches out there. We've sent emails to them about the urban growth boundary, about the concert traffic. I've never received a single response from the mayor or from any alderman. Michael Woods has answered me about the urban growth boundary, but that's it. They don't respond to us at all. And then when one of our residents contacted the news and had a news story run on, the, on how she could not get home in the evenings because literally her road was deadlocked on concert nights, they changed the rules of their meetings where only residents of Thompson Station can speak. So they can cause us problems, but we can't communicate with them because they don't answer emails, they won't return phone calls, and now we can't go to their meetings and speak. So we're asking you guys, I attended the 2040 meetings. You know, we can't can keep paving over every blade of grass in this county. There's got to be some rural areas left, and we're just asking you guys to continue to protect us as you have been. Just, you know, leave something, a little bit green space, please. Next, uh, thank you, Ms. Green. Next is uh, Thomas Stevenson. And following that is Tony Sharp. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, and I appreciate you allowing uh, public comments and allowing us to speak this morning. Uh, my name is Thomas Stevenson. My family and I are the newest residents in the Harpeth Woods community in Franklin. Uh, which has been included in the Thompson Station UGB, despite, as you've already heard, repeated requests and notarized letters and petitions that have gone ignored. Uh, like the last speaker, I'm, I'm born and raised here in Franklin. Uh, I was educated here in Williamson County. Uh, my family's been here for over 200 years. And so, needless to say, we've seen tremendous change in this county, particularly in the last 30 years. And change is a good thing. I'm in favor of change but I'm in favor of measured and well-planned change and growth. And I believe some municipalities in our county are doing a better job than others. I understand the UGB process is a necessary process. However, our inclusion in Harpeth Woods, the Harpeth Paytonsville community, the West Harpeth community, in the Thompson Station UGB concerns me greatly. My concerns of being included in the Thompson Station UGB are twofold. First of all, as has already been noted, I don't believe that Thompson Station is the appropriate municipality to include us in their UGB, UGB and potentially later to be annexed. They lack proper infrastructure, resources, and planning ability to take care of us now or frankly, any time in the near future. There are virtually no <laughs> benefits to us being included in Thompson Station any time in the future. There are only benefits to Thompson Station from a taxation and annexation perspective. My second concern is that the way in which Thompson Station has gone about this process and the way they have annexed others in the past 
uh, instills a lack of trust and confidence in their concern for us as citizens. Our greatest concern in Harpeth Woods in particular is that there's a potential for us to be annexed, for the, the ability for them to connect our roads to future developments around us and to the First Bank Amphitheater <coughs> behind us. This is something that Spring Hill and Thompson Station have repeatedly done. This will fundamentally change the character of our neighborhood, create a safety issue for our families and our children, and decrease our home values. I speak for all of Harpeth Woods, the greater Harpeth Paytonsville community, the Bethesda community, and the West Harpeth community when I ask that we be removed from the Thompson Station UGB. These are communities that have been a part of unincorporated Williamson County and the community of Franklin for generations, and we wanna make sure it stays that way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Mr. Tony Sharp, and on deck is uh, County Commissioner Greg Sanford. Good morning. Um, my name is Tony Sharp. I live off West Harpeth. Um, I live in the subdivision of Laurel Hill, right across from South Point near uh, Indian Meadows. Um, appreciate the support of the city, the BOMA, and the Williams County Commissioners. I just want to read an email real quick. and uh, This was to the, the owner of A1 Properties, who... Uh, owns the land right off of West Harpeth. I emailed him on August 22nd, and I've given this to the BOMA. Uh, are you the current landowner of West Harpeth Road and Columbia Avenue before the railroad tracks? If so, uh, will the homes you build on, on your website be the current homes listed? Uh, the type of homes on his website are look like low to moderate income homes. So obviously something went right there. Uh, Brandon Robertson re replied, A1 Home Builders is my company and the landowner. <clears throat> the plan is to sell the lots to a group of Local home builders, including Tennessee Valley Homes and Celebration Homes. I'm not sure exactly what they will build on these lots, but will be much nicer than the product ones that you see on my website. My response also to him was, will there be one home per five acres or one home per acre? Several homeowners, including myself, are a little worried about three homes per acre, like a toll gate. He responded, probably one unit per acre. <clears throat> There's obviously been a lack of transparency here with this um, development and these, these UGB lines. and. A lot of this is very complex and confusing and the communication to the homeowners is lacking. Uh, I never received any certified mail in my, my mailbox about any of these meetings or what was being proposed. Um, and while a lot of this is com complicated, as a banker, I do support growth and development, but I can tell you um, I support smart growth and development. And Mayor Stover, one thing that is not uh, complicated is we do not want to be part of Thompson Station. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. So we have approximately how much time left, Greg? About uh, 10 minutes. So we've got 10 minutes and six speakers. <clears throat> Brevity would help so that we could get all six of these there. Commissioner, you're up next. Good morning. My name is Greg Sanford. Um, I live in Arrington, Tennessee. This morning I stand before you um, not as a county commissioner, but as a citizen. Um, I own two tracts of land in uh, Triune that are currently included in the Triune Special Character Area Plan. Um, when I started seeing initial maps of the new Triune Plan Growth Area, um, I did not see my parcels uh, included in that. Uh, I would ask the county leaders to include my parcels um, in that new plan growth area plan. Uh, I did acquire this land long before I decided to run for county commissioner um, and purchased it um, long ago. So I would just ask Williamson County to uh, please consider um, putting my two tracts of land that are in the Triune Special Character Area Plan inside the new plan growth area for Triune. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. John Lee. I'm sorry, I didn't give heads up, John. Next is Henry Hafner, and after that is Deborah Haggard. John. Well, I'd like to thank the committee for getting uh, community input and listening to us. I'd like to echo everything that's been said before. Um, I'm, I live at the corner of Duplex Road and Lee Road in the little area of duplex. Um, and we've talked some about what a prudent person would think would be included. And if you look at the map, 
our area of about uh, a little over 2,000 acres is surrounded on three sides by the city of Spring Hill. However, we are unique. It's agricultural, um, probably, I'd say uh, a third of it is family farms of some sort. Most of them are multi-generational, such as mine. And I echo what my neighbors say in that we do not want to look like Spring Hill. You go on the other side of the interstate, it's a mass of rooftops south of me uh, is in the Spring Hill urban growth area since they created them. And they put a concrete plant on a rural county road. There've been multiple accidents. The roads aren't designed for that. The area just south of me, which part of my land does go into, William, into Murray County is in the urban growth boundary. That area in the last 20 years, has, the use has been changed at least four times, residential, to, they were gonna put a theme park down there. Then it was gonna be the next Maryland Farms. And now it's gonna be a bunch of warehouses. Um, and we'll see what the next flavor of the month is. So I'd like y'all to appreciate what we have. We'd like to remain in the current Williams and County zone. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mr. Henry Hafner. And following that is Deborah Haggard. Hazard. Good morning. My name's Henry Hafner, and I live at 2795 Owl Hollow Road. And uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of six families uh, on Owl Hollow Road, um, all my neighbors. Uh, we are currently in the Spring Hill uh, proposed urban growth boundary, and we ask to be removed. Uh, as, uh, as Mr. Lee also spoke, um, most of us are multi-generational farms there. We, uh, it's an agricultural neighborhood. Um, we, uh, we make our living with, uh, with farming, with hunting, and uh, um, we, we simply ask to be left alone. Uh, there's no advantage for us to be a part of Spring Hill. Uh, the, uh, the Spring Hill growth is, um, is out of control. My family has, uh, has lived there for 70 years. And uh, it's my hope to, uh, to pass that on to my children and, uh, and grandchildren. Uh, there's enough concrete and subdivisions in Williamson County. And uh, so we uh, please, we beg you, uh, remove us from the uh, proposed UGB and uh, I'll hold the road. Thank you very much. Next is Deborah Hazard. Haggard. After that is Andrew Veneer, and the last one is Marty Benefield. Good morning, everyone. Um, Deborah Haggard. Yes, I'm related to Merle, but um, I'm not just here because I look good in yellow. Um, my parents built in Harpeth Woods almost 25 years ago, and most of my siblings have now since then moved to Williamson County, we bought my dad's house a year ago when the prices were still way up here and now they've come <clears throat> down here. And since we've moved there, um, we've been included in the UGB for Thompson Station. My concern is that the developers in our area are asking Thompson Station to annex them. So my question is why? The answer is usually money with developers. We all know that's number one. So why are they asking Thompson Station? And this is going to affect everyone in Williamson County. We all use the same Costco. We all use the same um, Trader Joe's. They're all busy. We all use the same schools. And this is where my concern is because we're, as of today, number three in the state for our school system. If this drops, then all of our, everyone in here, all of our property values will drop if the school systems, which are already overcrowded, if they drop from third position. So I would ask everyone who has 
a say in this, to consider it, and to take care of our kids and our school system. Thank you. The next one is Andrew. Vene okay, and then Marty Benefield. Good morning, everybody. My name is Andrew Keenan. I live at 1539 West Harvest Road. I unfortunately can't claim to be a Franklin native or a local. Well, I am a local, not a native, I'm sorry. Uh, my claim to fame maybe is that I did marry a Franklin native. So as somebody that moved here from somewhere else, I can tell you probably some of the main draws to people to come to the area. The schools, the lack of crime, the beautiful green rolling hills, farmland and forests that surround the area, and the traffic problem that seems to be getting worse is not helping, but the traffic was an initial draw as I could get places without having to sit and wait stoplight to stoplight just to get around town. The problem we're faced with now in our area along the West Harpeth and anywhere it seems north of Thompson Station is that we're trying to be taken into Thompson Station's UGB. The residents in this area do not want to be a part of Thompson Station's UGB. There are multiple reasons for this. Among them is a simple one of looking at Thompson Station's track record. Sure, they will tell you they want to have rural character. They want to maintain this and they want to make different developments and keep the character of the county as it is. The track record does not show this. Look at the recent developments in Thompson Station. I'd like to see somebody name one that is a very rural development Maybe we have different ideas of what the meaning of the word rural is. My idea is not houses on top of each other with no lawns in between them. The only people that want to be put into the Thompson Station UGB are some parcels owned by developers. One large one near us is 150 acres owned by A1. Their goal is pretty clear. It's to get into the UGB, become annexed by Thompson Station, so that they have access to their sewer system that is not actually even a sewer treatment plant at this point in time so that they can build high density development as they've done with every other place that has been annexed into them in the last years. If we don't stop the problem and create, keep more green space and keep the county as it is, we're gonna be faced with crowding and the problems we're already starting to have as a county are gonna to continue to get worse. We already have an existing traffic problem that's getting worse. Not only is this problem affecting the residents that are up here speaking to you today, but it's affecting all of the county South Central Williamson County in general, Thompson Station and Spring Hill particularly, seem to have a growing problem. They're growing as fast as they can and don't really seem to have any focus on infrastructure, roads, schools, or any other necessary services. I think everybody that stood up here today and spoke to you does not have a problem with growth. The, thank you. the problem with, sorry. Everybody that stood up here and talked to you today does not have a problem with the area growing or new residents coming to the area. What the focus is, is we would like to have sustainable growth. We don't need to build houses as fast as possible, as dense as possible. Keep in mind the draw that brings people to the area. It wasn't dense housing developments. It's not traffic, it's not crime. It's the things that we have that are not these. We, by allowing this growth to continue without planning, building infrastructure, building new roads, we're gonna create uh, traffic problems and other issues with this. Uh, the value, there's, I guess the main lesson here is there's no value added for us going into the Thompson Station Urban Growth Boundary. I ask the county to please keep us in the county itself out of the Thompson Station Urban Growth Boundary as they have no benefit to offer to us. The only thing we stand to gain would be decreasing property values because we're no longer in Franklin area. Thank you. And the final one is Marty Benefield. Marty. Hi, I'm Marty Benefield. I actually live at 2746 Owl Hollow Road. I, like Mr. Lee and Mr. Hafner, we've lived on these farms for hundreds of years. I mean, these are generational. As a matter of fact, my great granddaddy owned the store at the end of Duplex Road back years ago. The last Pony Express delivery east of the Mississippi came from that store. So that's how far I go back in this. You're probably, you will hear from, we're the three probably largest landowners in that area. I can tell you, my neighbors, no one else wants to be included in this 
urban growth. We do not want to be a part of Spring Hill. We had no say in it. We still have no say in it. I can't vote for anybody in Spring Hill. I can only vote for Williamson County. I just assure you, it's just a money grab. That's all it is. All you're doing is destroying it. You're not doing anything to help the community. People move here because there are still areas like this. You're just looking to destroy it. That's all you do. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Benefield. That concludes our public hearing, public comments during this time. Next, we'll go on to the business at hand. First item for the members of the coordinating committee will be the approval of the minutes that were mailed out to you under separate cover. Do I have a motion to accept those minutes? Proper motion, second. Thank you. Questions? Deletions? Corrections, ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, let the records reflect the minutes passed unanimously. At this time, I'll call back uh, Greg Dale to kind of go through a presentation of the individual jurisdiction proposals for the amendment. As he indicated earlier, there is no vote today, or this is an official vote, but we'll be looking at some areas, I'm sure there will be some consensus. Greg, thank you for doing this. And to all of you that spoke, we do appreciate your, your input. Thank you. Thank you again, Mayor. So the way we're going to spend the bulk of the time from here is to hear presentations from each of the jurisdictions about their proposed growth areas. Let me, uh, before we do that, though, I want to um, reset in your minds where we're going from here, where, where the process is, is headed. Um, so I think I can use this. Um, we will be back here on September 19th in this, in this room, same time, same space, um, to talk further about this. Uh, specifically, what will happen between now and then <clears throat> is a draft of the full plan will be put together for your review. That will include the maps, and we all know that the maps are the uh, kind of center of that process, but there will be other things that you will see in that plan. Um, I don't think for the folks who have been tracking this at the advisory group level, you're going to see any, any surprises, uh, but it will be a plan. It will have background information. It will include the guiding principles that we worked on with you all, uh, you know, two, two years ago. It will include the implementation strategies. And remember, the implementation strategies, really the main three things are uh, that there would be an agreement among the jurisdictions not to annex outside of the growth area. There would be a commitment to revisit this process in five years. Um, and there would be a commitment to continue in an advisory capacity, much as the way this group worked, uh, worked previously with something maybe like uh, quarterly meetings, that's to be determined, but to deal with other regional issues. And I think we all understand that the regional transportation issues are probably first on the, on the to-do list to, to, to tackle. Um, so anyway, that's, that's part of what um, would be involved with that. Um, but at that point then, we uh, will, um, once you get to a point, once this group gets to a point where it's comfortable with a draft plan for the purpose of holding public hearings, there will be two public hearings held by this coordinating committee at which uh, the public is, is invited to, uh, to, to speak. And then you would come back tentatively um, in October to, um, let me see if I've got the right slide up here. I think I went <coughs> too far. Yeah, in October where there would be, that's the time tentatively that a vote would be taken. And that vote would be taken, which is essentially to then refer this to the individual jurisdictions and the individual jurisdictions at that point would need to ratify that. That's, that's a lot of information, but the point is that you have a couple of steps involved before you get to the point where you're ready to make a vote as a coordinating committee 
that would refer that to the jurisdictions for their ratification. And then each jurisdiction would need to ratify that plan. And if that occurs, then it goes to the state for approval at the, at the, at the state level. So the point is, is that somewhere over the next couple of meetings, we need to get to a point where you all are comfortable with taking a vote on this. Um, you're gonna hear from each of the jurisdictions. You can ask questions about that. One of the questions I will be asking you, well, two questions I'll be asking you today, is as we hear these presentations, um, um, whether or not there appears to be consensus on those growth boundaries. Um, in some cases there may be, in some cases may not be. What we hope to try to do here is to narrow down the range of topics that we need to address with you. So we're gonna ask you to give some sort of, of indication, it's not a vote, it's not binding, but we would like to hear from each of the jurisdictions to just understand where we have issues um, and where we don't have issues. The other question that I will ask of you all today, so be thinking about this, is given everything that you're hearing today, given public comment, given the presentations that you're about to hear, what, if any additional information, can we provide to you? We meaning uh, as a facilitator or as your technical staffs, uh, your, your planning staff, what additional information would you need to, to make decisions about this? So please be thinking about that. Um, so are there any questions about where we're going from here, just from a process perspective on the coordinating committee? Yes, Eric. Just real quick, do we have the dates for the public hearing set yet? Or <clears throat> no, sir. Talk about that, or how will we land on those dates? Good question. We were, uh, as, as, as for those who don't know, Mike Madison uh, is, a, what is your, your official title for this? Secretary. Committee? Secretary of this, of this committee. He raised that question also. So that is something that we do need to decide both what those are and how we arrive at what those what those dates are. I mean, we could uh, propose some dates for the committee, circulate those, um, but to answer your question, Eric, no, those have not been selected yet. Okay, other um, questions about the process? Everybody clear where we are with the, with the committee? Okay, well, let's jump into the pre presentations and what we're gonna do I'll give you the order of the presentations, generally just starting starting north and work our way south. So we're going to start with Brentwood, and then we're going to go with uh, Fairview, Nolensville, Franklin, Thompson Station, Spring Hill, and then the county. Okay? So, Bob, you get the pleasure of starting first. Thank you, good morning. So starting off, the, the Board of Commissioners in Brentwood approved the uh, UGB boundaries, the proposed UGB, UGB boundaries on August 14th. Um, we sent out our notices, held two public hearings, one at the Planning Commission level and one at the Board of Commissioners level in, in July. <coughs> And because we're making uh, very minor changes, uh, we received no feedback, either written or oral, at either of those uh, public meetings. Um, <clears throat> when, let's see. When the original uh, Williamson County urban growth boundary was approved in 2002, the city of Brentwood was very intentional in its planning efforts to identify those areas where the city could realistically provide essential services, including utility services, um, and that specifically uh, sewer services. And we looked at population projections at that time and cost of services uh, analysis were completed at that time as well. Um, since that time, the city's long-term infrastructure planning efforts uh, have been based on eventual build-out of the original UGB boundaries and the long-term plan, the community plan for Brentwood, the, the comprehensive plan for Brentwood um, was adopted in 2016 based on those principles. Um, as you can see, uh, Brentwood is a, uh, a unique in that we're 
uh, one of the older, more well-established municipalities in Williamson County. Um, we have uh, Davidson County to the north, Nolansville to the east, Franklin to the south. So we're somewhat landlocked uh, by other municipalities surrounding us. And as I stated, the, the sewer availability uh, in Brentwood's system is limited. So with that, given these factors uh, and the desire not to promote further development in areas where the city controls utility services, uh, Brentwood has elected not to propose any significant alterations of its remaining urban growth boundary area as part of this plan. So let's see, this is more of a close up of Brentwood's existing UGB sh shown in uh, dark green and the, the light green is the, um, I mean the existing city of Brentwood is in dark green. The UGB boundaries are in light green. There were two small housekeeping corrections that were proposed, one just north of Maxwell Lane to remove two pieces of property that were already had already been annexed into the town of Nolansville and um, a small housekeeping correction on Sam Donald Road to uh, sort of close a gap on a piece of property that was partly in the Brentwood urban growth boundary and partly out of the, the, the Brentwood growth boundary. And so those were the only two uh, changes that were proposed. We had no uh, public comments on our plan. Um, and with that, um, I don't think we have, uh, we need any additional information at this time and I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let me, let me do this. I'm gonna do this with each of the, each of the presentations. Um, and again, these are not binding binding votes, but I think the way we did this last meeting worked well, and that is I'd just like to give everybody an opportunity. So I'm just gonna call on the, I'm, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name the jurisdiction, and then if anybody from that jurisdiction on the committee has, has any concerns about what you're hearing, let us know. So Fairview, anything from Fairview's perspective? No. Nolansville? No. In, in term, yeah, okay. Uh, Franklin? No. Thompson Station? Nothing? No. Spring Hill? No. And the county? Okay. All right. So does everybody understand what we're doing here? We're just trying to identify where we ha think we have consensus, narrow down the range of issues. These are not binding votes. Uh, we're just trying to understand if there are concerns. So we're going to do that with each after each jurisdiction. So Fairview? The city of Fairview's urban growth boundary, uh, just to give a little update on where we are in the process, we've had two public hearings. Both of our public hearings, we had one speaker, the mayor spoke at our first public hearing who sits on this commission. And she gave some clarity to how the process works to the citizens. And then at the second, uh, we also had one speaker who spoke in favor of our proposed urban growth boundary. Here's the 2001 uh, original urban growth boundary that the city of Fairview had. We're located up in the northwest corner. Um, our kind of changes that we've had, um, as you can see along the north uh, boundary of Williamson County, we had that completely in our urban growth boundary and then again with Fairview for our proposed, we've removed a little bit out of our Northern boundary and we have added a little bit to our Southwest and down in the 840 corridor with the expectation that we will be able to provide sewer and water services into that area at a more efficient rate. 
Any questions? All right, let's do the same thing. And um, um, Christy just reminded me that uh, previous go around, I just called on the jurisdictions, not the other agencies. So all the other agencies, school districts, soil and water conservation, all those things, um, feel free to, 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 to jump in with this. But let's go through it again uh, in terms of any concerns that you're hearing from Fairview, Brentwood, um, Nolensville, Franklin. Thompson Station, no, just, Spring Hill no. County. And can I just kind of open it up to the other agencies that are involved in this school district or anyone else? Any concerns you're hearing from that? Okay, then let's go to Nolensville. Well, thank you, I'm Brent Schultz, Planning Director. And uh, let me take you through a bit here on, on our planning effort. And um, we uh, started back in 2021 with our boundaries. We're, we're looking at expanding our UGB to the southwest and to the, to the east. You'll see it there in the light green, as well as a, a five-year UGB about where we'd like to go. Obviously, we're just requesting to expand into the green areas. Um, we had uh, three meetings, a community engagement meeting where we sent out 288 letters to our residents, our property owners impacted by that. We also had uh, two public hearings and those were on July 11th and August 3rd. The planning commission met first on it and had their public hearing, which was advertised. And then also the uh, board of commissioners and by resolution, they approved those uh, light green areas. And th those have been sent to Greg. So there we showed all, uh, every meeting, we showed everybody the whole uh, plan for the county where everybody's ex uh, proposing to expand, including ours. And you see the Nolensville area. We also had blow ups at those meetings showing in the light green, the areas where we're proposing to expand. And um, it's hard to look up here. Yeah, um, you can look at the screen over there. Oh, oh, I should have brought my other glasses. Um, just by the numbers, the uh, our, the area, the areas in yellow, the current UGB is 8.4 acres. The proposed UGB area is 3.5, the light green areas, and then uh, overall 11.9 acres. It would be the expansion if it's approved. Um, uh, one of the things I think is important on our meetings, we explain to everybody what it what it will not do. This is it was not an annexation plan. We're not proposing any annexations. Uh, your property tax will not be changed because you're in the UGB area. That was a, actually a lot of questions were asked about that. Not only emails, and it will not change your address. We talked about that. It will not change your school district. Uh, we we talked a lot about that. Also, I really reached out and our team reached out, Victor, to get public feedback and our board of commissioners. We had them send them to me by email. We even had forums at the, at the meetings and uh, we put a bunch of information on our website for people to get to it. And then the public comments, what were they? Are, you know, we talked about a little about those. Are you gonna annex me now? And that's, uh, we actually had a cemetery. I gotta get with my gun if it's, they say no one's maintaining that one came up. And that concludes our presentation. Any questions? Brent. Thank you. Okay, let's go, let's do the same thing then. Brentwood, any concerns? Fairview? No. Nolensville, that was Nolensville. Uh, Franklin? No. Thompson Station? No. Spring Hill? No. County? Any of the other agencies, utility, school, chamber, anyone else have any? Objections. Okay, 
Franklin. Who's doing Franklin? Emerald? Oh, there you are, Andrew. Yeah, I was Thank you, Greg. Good morning, coordinating committee. Um, Franklin's held their two required public hearings. The first one was held July 27th at the Franklin Municipal Planning Commission. Um, there was also a corresponding resolution to recommend to the board and to the coordinating committee approval of our draft UGB. Um, and they did pass that, uh, passed that, voted to recommend. And then it went to the board on August 8th and a public hearing was held and the resolution was deferred to August 22nd and last Tuesday um, the matter was taken up and, and voted by our board. Uh, we feel like we had a robust public outreach effort starting back in 2021. We had uh, community meetings, um, several of those, uh, some virtual ones as well as in-person ones, some hybrid meetings. Uh, we have an email distribution list of over 250 interested people um, that we have consistently over the last two years communicated with. Uh, we've had open office hours and several BOMA work sessions, joint workshops. So um, we've, we feel like we've, we've done a great job with public outreach. Um, in terms of our existing and proposed urban growth boundary on this map, you can see the city limits in yellow and then the blue line along the perimeter of the map being the existing limits and then that green line being the proposed, and then I've, I've starred a few areas. The red stars denote areas uh, recommended for removal from the UGB. Um, so starting in the northwest part of the map, you'll see uh, the Gentry Farm and then the large track directly to the north. Both of those property owners came forward and wanted to be removed, and um, the Gentrys wanted to remain a, a working Century Farm in the property north has plans for a, um, a rural equestrian type community. And then down Carter's Creek Pike and South Hall Road, uh, there's been a, a large rural retreat like development called South Hall Farms and they requested to be removed. Um, and for other reasons, uh, a larger swath of that area was recommended for removal. And then there are two stars along our uh, Thompson Station shared border and I'll get into one of those in, in a moment. And then the green star denotes an area of expansion in the Goose Creek Basin down Paytonsville Road uh, to the east of I-65. And as you can see on this map, the city's um, annexed outside of our UGB in this area. So it is a, an area of growth. We've annexed over 800 acres in the last few years. <clears throat> the Columbia Pike uh, area during our public hearings, we had some residents from Indian Meadows and uh, other areas along West Harper the Road. And it boils down to this highlighted parcel. And the city of Franklin is recommending removing that highlighted parcel. And on August 22nd, last Tuesday, our BOMA voted to remove the highlighted parcels due to previous sewer denial approvals requested by the property owner. So the property owner could develop in the county under the county's regulations. So um, the, the property owner did come forward to the city of Franklin and petition to develop in the county and that uh, the first step is to ask for a sewer denial letter from the city, which was approved by the city um, so they could work with the county. Uh, after that, during this UGB update, uh, these properties were um, requested to be added to the Thompson Station UGB. So as part of our resolution that our board passed last week, our BOMA voted to advise its coordinating committee representatives to advocate leaving the yellow highlighted properties outside of any municipalities UGB so it can develop in the county. So in summary, Franklin has been a fast growing community since the 1980s with continued population growth, and that's expected to continue. The city has annexed over 800 acres outside of its UGB in the Goose Creek area. Uh, gravity sewer service can be extended into this territory to be added. 
Roadway improvements will be needed and coordinated with new development, but are included in our major thoroughfare plan. Um, the city of Franklin is recommending the removal of uh, 2,534 acres from the UGB to help preserve rural character and honor the requests of property owners. And just to recap, those include areas north of New Highway 96 West, along Carter's Creek Pike and South Hall Road, and also along uh, US 31 Columbia Pike. Thank you. Questions for Andrew. <clears throat> Okay, so this one gets is, it, is this your thing? Oh. This one gets a little more complicated in my questions um, because what Franklin did was actually two things. They, as you heard, they they uh, approved the boundary. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me get closer. They approved the boundaries that you see before you, but as essentially a side message, if that's correct, uh, they asked that uh, uh, that the com uh, the committee. Uh, not include the area that's in question here within any urban growth boundary. So my question when I go through the jurisdictions and ask you if you have any concerns about uh, what the city of Franklin has proposed is on that first point. That is the boundaries that they did approve. The city did approve certain boundaries. So recognizing that this is a, is a separate issue, I'm going to go through the same, same groups. Brentwood, any issues or concerns? Um, Fairview. Oh, Nolansville, no. Thompson Station, no. No. Spring Hill, no. and the county. Okay. All right. Well, let's keep going. Um, we realize that we have this this issue on the table. We'll come back and talk to you or talk with you about how we want to address that. But let's keep going through this. We're going to go to Thompson Stations, Micah. Does everybody need a mid-meeting stretch at this point? We're going on an hour and a half. <laughs> All right. All right. Is this the clicker? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Michael Wood. I'll be giving Thompson Station's uh, growth plan update. Um, that mine's a little bit longer than some of my colleagues. Obviously, there you've heard a lot of public comment. Uh, related uh, to Thompson Station's urban growth boundary, uh, and then Franklin's, uh, uh, Boma's uh, vote on that. Um, try to get a little bit better here. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll see if we can uh, keep the computer working here. Sometimes I have a like weird effect on technology so well hopefully it'll uh, it'll uh, pull through uh, but so I'm going to go over kind of the planning process uh, and to give you some context to the map that we uh, we have ended on uh, so the first step in our public uh, engagement pro public process was public engagement uh, we had a series of meetings in 2021 uh, we also paired it with our comprehensive planning process called all aboard so we not only had growth plan meetings in particular, we had a wide spectrum of discussions about land use, transportation, growth, areas to, to grow into, areas to preserve. Uh, all of these were, were kind of held uh, in the 2021-2022 timeline. Uh, these two processes went in parallel. We also, of course, had an uh, online component, uh, but a little bit uniquely in my experience as a planner, uh, most of the dialogue actually came in one-to-one -one meetings. Uh, and we've had a lot of one-to-one -one meetings in terms of phone calls, uh, people come into town hall, uh, setting up uh, discussions, uh, and, and we've had uh, a tremendous amount of those that have included uh, up until this week. So this is the public engagement that we've had is not just one component that was done early uh, and then dropped. Now, that's not to say that everybody leaves those meetings with, uh, you know, a uh, satisfied answer or feels like that, you know, they got exactly what they wanted. Um, we all know that's part of the public dialogue and the public process. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you a series of maps to kind of show how we got to where we, we've ended up with. Uh, so after we kicked off our public engagement process, uh, we started with an initial study map. Uh, this was 
prior to the point where we had talked about having a five-year growth plan. So obviously we were looking at our planning horizon on a much longer timeline, 20 plus years. Uh, so uh, this, this is just an example of our early study map. Um, we looked at our population projections uh, and then areas, uh, this is kind of a heat map. Uh, so the areas uh, that were obviously easier to serve are closer in to, uh, to the town's existing boundaries. And then I'll show you this, this map. This is kind of an intermediate step uh, between our study map, early process, and then where we are now. Um, this, uh, at this point again, before the five year timeline, so we were looking at 20 plus years, it had been 20 plus years since the existing urban growth boundary plan had been opened. So we were really looking on that long time horizon. Uh, and I'll show you this, uh, it includes a, a 10 year urban growth boundary and a 20 year. So again, looking over that longer time horizon. I, I wanted to show you this to show you how Thompson Station's map has changed and evolved as we have had interactions and listened to people that either wanted to be in our urban growth boundary or out of our urban growth boundary. And we have, I would say probably more than any other jurisdiction, we have changed our map uh, based on different circumstances. So when the five year urban growth boundary came into effect, obviously that shrinks uh, the area that we needed to look at. Uh, when we had particular property owners that we could take out uh, and not create uh, gaps in service areas, or sometimes those are called donut holes. Uh, we did that. Um, so we have tried to be responsive as much as we can while still making, you know, urban growth, the urban growth boundary is a planning tool. Uh, so we, we don't want to create a planning tool that has holes in it or service gaps or things like that uh, for, for that, uh, for that planning purpose. Uh, so again, we have tried to be responsive and make changes as, uh, as circumstances have dictated. And so this, uh, this is the map that, uh, that, that we've, uh, we've kind of arrived at making, making all those changes. Uh, as you can see, it's much tailored in from, from previous versions. Um, uh, this includes uh, all the, the updates that we've made, uh, including uh, we had uh, earlier this year uh, a revision based on uh, some discussions with the city of Spring Hill. So uh, we, have, we have made those changes to arrive at this. Some updates about our actual process. Um, in June, we kind of had uh, a summary meeting with our planning commission and board of mayor and aldermen uh, to get ready for the public hearings uh, that we had. Planning commission had their first public hearing that was in July. Uh, they provided a unanimous recommendation onto the board of mayor and aldermen. Uh, and then uh, earlier this month on the 8th of August, the board of mayor and aldermen unanimously adopted uh, the report and map. So just kind of in closing, wanted to hit some of the summaries, uh, summary points from our report. Um, and again, these are things that the, obviously the town staff uh, is confident in uh, and that the planning commission and the, our board of mayor and aldermen have unanimously agreed uh, that this map presents a reasonably compact yet sufficiently large area to accommodate growth. This is straight out of the, uh, the enabling legislation for, uh, for urban growth plant growth plans and urban growth boundaries. Uh, the proposed UGB is contiguous uh, and it follows the town's adopted annexation policy, uh, which uh, is designed to avoid leapfrog annexations, non-contiguous annexations, and annexations that would create those service gaps or those donut holes uh, uh, as a result of, of any of those requests. It follows major thoroughfare plans uh, and uh, the town believes it includes the areas that are best served by the town based on their proximity. And since we did our growth plan in conjunction with our comprehensive planning process, uh, we feel very confident that this reflects a balanced approach to preservation and growth. So I will leave you with our map. Unless there are questions. Question for Michael. So the way I understand your plan, uh, you're saying conflict with the recommendation Franklin to leave part of the UGB that Franklin has taken out. And they suggested, yeah, give me the microphone. We'll start over. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The way I understand your plan, it's in conflict, and correct me if I'm wrong. So Franklin is taking part of their UGB out. 
um, and suggested that it remain in the county. However, um, you all are proposing to pull that into uh, your GP, is that well, correct? Well, th that's at the request of the property owner. The property owner requested uh, if it wasn't going to be in Franklin, I think they went through the process to see if it, Franklin would annex it. Um, Franklin's BOMA decided not to annex it. Uh, and I think to remove it from their urban growth boundary, the property owner requested that the town include it in our urban growth boundary. We discussed with Franklin, you know, if they were removing it, um, you know, we would have that conversation with the property owner. Uh, my understanding, and so I guess it'd be for Franklin to... Uh, provide a little bit more clarity on that. My understanding is that their map does not, uh, they can't dictate where the property goes, whether it's in Thompson Station or the county. Uh, our map has been approved by our planning commission in Boma, and it does show it being included in the town's urban growth boundary. And, and let's, <clears throat> let's I'm, I appreciate that question because there's a nuance here that's important to understand, and, and I think the city can clarify that uh, in terms of it's technically not in conflict with your proposed boundaries. Uh, in that it's now outside of this proposed to be outside of the city's growth boundary, but there was a communication. <laughs> Eric, why don't you explain that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, here, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let me walk through kind of where we are. Um, and, and one point of clarification from what Mike had just addressed an annexation request never happened with the city of Franklin. What it was was a specific request to deny sewer availability, which the board granted. So what, what our board went through over several meetings was to look, re-review this. We had made a determination early on that this was a difficult area for, for the city to, to serve. Um, and we had a series of requests from various property owners uh, to be uh, removed from the urban growth boundary and, and Andrew kind of walked through that. The principles we looked at was, could we serve it? Was it realistic to serve? How did it match our broader infrastructure plans? If a removal was granted, did it create a hardship for other property owners? And then we also looked at um, other specific um, related to sewer seems to be a primary driver, but other, other service capabilities. So, that was sort of our starting point. When this specific element was brought up, we had denied sewer. We had specifically said we were not going to serve it with sewer. Um, and so that, that remained and we had proposed its removal. What evolved was, though, concerns about um, there's greater density proposed than what our understanding had been when the denial was issued. So some of that had changed and, and that's part of why our board said we wanted to advocate or this just being outside of our urban growth boundary and in a county area. Um, and so I think that was the, behind the thinking of the board, which was, um, yeah, we're continuing to honor what we heard from property owners, but we have concerns about uh, how this fits in. We heard significant concerns from residents uh, in the area that are in our existing and will continue to be in our urban growth boundary. So we felt like their voices needed to be heard. But then also the fact that, that at least what we're hearing in terms of plans and density is significantly higher than what was the understanding when we denied sewer to begin with. So that's that's sort of where we are. I, it's really what happens with the area that's removed from Franklin's UGB is I think the question. Uh, the board made the decision to stay the course with removing it, but it's what happens from there. That cleared everyone. If you look at the maps on, as they're on, if you put them all together and put them on a composite map, which we've done, there is not a conflict. Right, the conflict or the disagreement is what happens with that piece of property that Franklin would rather see in in no urban growth boundary. Yeah, it's consistent with our understanding of denying it that stayed in the county. Right. Mike, is there anything you want to add to that? I, I would just say, I guess, from the town's standpoint, and the mayor obviously can speak uh, more to this as the committee member. But I mean, I think we appreciate Franklin's Boma's uh, kind of advisory comments about it. Um, and uh, we have been in discussion with the developer related uh, to eventual annexation. Obviously, that would be contingent on the urban growth boundary uh, happening. Uh, so, again, we would appreciate Franklin's comments. Uh, but, again, our Planning Commission board, um, we can brief them on this to see if they had, had any additional um, 
decision related to including it or not, we'll bring that back to them uh, this month uh, after, I think BOMA's, your BOMA meeting was last week. So we haven't had a meeting yet where we've been able to bring that up to them. Uh, we certainly will. Um, and we can obviously bring that back to a future coordinating committee, but what their, uh, what their eventual decision would be. Can I ask a question? Did your presentation triggered this for, for me, and I'm just curious. And it also, I think, kind of fits some of the guiding principles we talked about in this process overall. You talked about creating gaps in service. Does this property in question, if it were in the county, does that create any hardship in terms of gaps in serving other areas of the community, both existing or future growth areas? Are there any gaps generated if if it stayed in the county or however however this falls? How does that fit in that that concept? Because I think that's something we're all trying to be uh, aware of, sensitive to, and, and do a good long. -term yeah, I, I think it actually could create a uh, an issue with Thompson Station sewer um, issues. We can get into this a little bit more. I'd want to talk to our um, uh, our engineering folks to understand it a little bit better. Uh, but uh, but part of any uh, new development in that area would be required to provide. Tom Station, we have a kind of a unique sewer system. It requires drip fields. We don't have a point uh, discharge into a body of water. Uh, so any uh, development in that area would be required to provide the town with uh, additional drip fields. We already have some drip fields. So we know that the soils are particularly conducive to that, literally right across the street. Um, so Yes, there could be some uh, some impacts to the town if if that ends up not being included in the town's growth boundary. I would echo exactly what Eric said and the comments that the board made after a lengthy discussion at our meeting. Uh, my question is, what is the horizon uh, for sewer to that parcel? That's a complicated question because there is uh, in our uh, town attorneys here maybe he can speak a little bit more to it the town had a uh, previously approved agreement with that property uh, when it was both sides of the road uh, and it included providing sewer to the area that was in Franklin's urban growth boundary which is not obviously something that would is ideal it's a very it's an old agreement and it's been very complicated for the town to kind of work through it uh, and try to resolve some of the issues uh, related to that uh, agreement. But there is already some service, sewer service provided to that northern tract uh, existing. Uh, so it's for 30 some lots, I believe at this point. So there's already, we already have a commitment and we've said consistently that it's in Franklin's urban growth boundary or if they develop in the county or whatever, um, you know, we really couldn't work through that until this this process played out. Uh, so uh, our sewer service, there, there's an existing development uh, immediately south of this property. So our sewer would be able to connect uh, just right across the road. So sewer service is not uh, an issue. Uh, now timing of it, where the town's has a 30 plus million dollar wastewater plant expansion that is just underway. So when additional capacity is available, you know, obviously they would have to wait until that um, that project is finished. And that'll be about uh, about two years. Other questions for Micah? So I suspect a lot of you on the coordinating committee who are gonna end up having to vote on this map are following some of this and not a lot of it at this point, right? I mean, because you don't know the geography, you don't know the properties, maybe the first time you're hearing this. Uh, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna put you on the spot. And uh, I'm sorry, I thought that was on. <clears throat> yeah. I think this one's still on. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll speak from here for now. Um, what I was saying is that, that uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask you the same question of do you have any concerns with this uh, because you're hearing a lot of information that's probably new to you. What I am going to ask you ultimately is how you want to proceed with getting to a point where you're ready as a coordinating committee to vote on this. Um, before we do that, why don't we go ahead and finish our presentations. We just have one more municipality, uh, uh, Spring Hill, and then we have the county. Uh, and after we do that, let's come back and figure out 
what the path forward is at, at this point. Good morning. Um, my name is Pam Kowski. I'm the city administrator. Uh, our planning director is under the weather, uh, and I pretty much ordered him to stay home after a lengthy planning commission meeting last night. Um, so Spring Hill is in a unique situation. Um, obviously, we're relatively rapidly growing, and we have been for some time, and there's a certain amount of um, frustration, whatever, with all of that. Um, <coughs> Uh, as well as a high desirability of residents and newcomers to, to live there. But we're really complicated by the fact that we're in two counties. And we are just about equally split between population and area between Williamson County and Murray County. We have a UGB in Murray County that has been in existence for some period of time. And maybe Victor knows, but I don't. Um, it's been back, it's been a while. And what I want to call your attention to is the fact that the white areas that are south of the county line that are adjacent to, Murray, uh, to Williamson County are all in the Murray County urban growth boundary. So what we are trying to do through our process is align several things. One, our long-term growth plans through our comprehensive 4040 rising plan our um, major thoroughfare plan, our reasonable utility expansion plan, as well as stormwater drainage uh, and stormwater management plans. Um, the ridge that is called the Duck River Ridge more or less approximates the blue line um, on, in the Williamson County area. Uh, they didn't draw the county lines according to drainage basins um, back in the 1700s. And so we're trying to make sure that we control all of the growth, the water flow that's going into the Duck River because the rest of the county flows into the Harpeth Basin. That said, I think the city, based on the conversations at the board meeting when this was presented and citizens spoke, would recognize that the northwest section of the um, county, which we would like to make sure does not develop anywhere, but either in the county or in Spring Hill, could remain out of the um, five-year urban growth boundary. Long term, if that is going to come into any city, we believe it ought to come in to Spring Hill, but we would be satisfied for it not to go into any city at this point in time. The board did not make that motion. Um, there was lots of discussion about it. Uh, the big concern was we had already messed with the map once and we didn't want to do it again. Uh, so we'll leave that to this group uh, to do. Um, as for the area on the uh, eastern side of the city, that is a prime growth area. As you can tell, we have already uh, annexed out to Lewisburg Pike, uh, a sliver, and then we have annexation as a sliver out um, on the west side, and we are trying to join those two, and it is extremely important to us, both for um, infrastructure development as well as Spring, let me back that up a second. Spring Hill has been a very dominantly residential community. We need and have the opportunity to diversify some of our economic base. And this is the area that is targeted for all of that. I would remind citizens who live in that area that may be here or watching this, that annexation is your prerogative. So. We may, you may be in our urban growth boundary, but if you don't wish to join the city, we will not compel you to do so. But we do want the opportunity as diversified economic activity comes into play that we have the opportunity to expand in that area. So we feel very strongly that maintaining that area and matching it with um, the Murray County urban growth boundary um, at the line is important. 
Also, we have zero urban growth boundary in Williamson County right now. I have no idea how that happened many years ago, but we have several little donuts. And right now, if those donuts wanted to annex, we would have a real challenge of annexing them because of the, the law that says if they're outside the urban growth boundary, the annexation process you have to go through. So obviously we want everything that's underlying the city in the county that may be surrounded by the city to be on an urban growth boundary. Um, I believe those are the only issues that we have and um, hopefully we'll go from there. Questions for Pam? Yes, sir. Anyway. So we've heard from some residents. <coughs> We've heard from some residents uh, here uh, that uh, are not currently uh, in Springfield. They don't want to be part of your uh, UGB. Uh, other municipalities have carved out uh, folks that don't want to be uh, part of uh, the UGB. Well, help, help us understand. So we feel, I think we are open to the, what's the called the Burwood area, Northwestern the blue section over here, we're certainly open to that being eliminated and just left in the county and not having a UGB there. We do have the UGB right up to it. So everything that's in Murray County is already in the city's UGB. Um, as for the that side, we do not believe that there is a way to carve out residents. The only one that we've carved out is that little white the little white area of Thompson Station in the north and the city limits to the south, that is fully developed. They don't want to be in the city and we're fine with that. They're, they, they're well developed and you know that's a long-term fight for another day. But the blue area that ties our two city limits together, we believe is important for the city. Um, there may be a way to carve out some, I think there's a century farm over there. There may be more than one century farm. There may be a way to carve those out as they're century farms and will likely never have anything to do with it. But um, it really is very important for us as a city to uh, tie those together and to keep them in the um, UGB so that as ownership changes and desires change that we could react to those appropriately. That that is our that is our non-residential development area, and we desperately need a non-residential development area. Thank you for that. I will have um, concerns and, and questions uh, as we go through the process, but thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I thought it was you, Victor. I was like. <laughs> this is not really a question, it's a comment, but it's for Spring Hill and Thompson Station. As you've heard, all the people that are here, you know, they're not wanting to be in the city, the world, that's where they want to stay. And it's not the city's land, it's these long landowners' land to do as they wish. And I wish that y'all would try to, um, Thompson Station and Spring Hill work with them. They don't want to be in, then ahead, please. But I wish y'all would really work on this. The station's already done a lot, but there's still a lot more to be removed. So. If, if I might react. <laughs> if I might react. Let's remember that the urban growth boundary is not annexation. And I often think, I think we may be believing that just because you are in the urban growth boundary that you're automatically now going to be a part of that city. The annexation process is very different from designing what city something's going to go into if it, it ever goes in that direction. And so I would really, implore the citizens to realize that we're not wanting to grab their land. It's their choice whether they come into a city. Being in an urban growth boundary just identifies which city you'll ever go into if you ever get there. And there's a lot of ifs in that statement. I think they realize that. They just feel like this is the first step to get them into the city and they just don't want it. Thank Micah. Um, I don't have 
I understand that sentiment, uh, but again, under state law, it's the property owner that has the authority to request annexation. So I think we need to make sure that we're all dealing with the same set of local law. My understanding of the law is, is that only property owners can can request that annexation uh, in, into an urban growth boundary. So and you said you can't have donut holes, so they can end up having it anyway. Again, it's part of a, you know, a property owner, but just because someone requests annexation does not mean that a, a legislative body will accept that. And Tom Station, for our part, we have an annexation policy that would say if it was going to create a donut, a donut hole or a non contiguous annexation, our policy is the property owner may request that annexation, but the, and what the recommendation that the staff would give would be you have to turn this down because you're creating uh, a situation that goes against your own adopted annexation policy. So I just wanted to put, put that out there. Okay, let's, let's do this. We only got one more to do. It's the county. Let's get it on the table, and then we're going to come back and, and talk about next steps. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I will be presenting Williamson County's proposal for our rural areas and planned growth areas. There we go. Okay, so this map depicts our current rural areas shown in white and our current planned growth areas shown in the tan shade. Uh, as you can see, we have two fairly large PGAs one in the eastern part of the county in what is referred to as Triune generally, and then one in the north central portion of the county in the grassland area. Uh, so that's what our current situation is. Uh, our comprehensive land use plan was adopted just about a year or so before we all began working on these growth planning uh, issues and, and, and began this effort together. Uh, it contains a number of recommendations, of course, but the key theme of our comprehensive plan is to preserve rural character in outlying areas by focusing the majority of growth in and around the cities where the infrastructure is either presently there or can be readily extended. Uh, our comprehensive plan uh, included pretty significant amount of public comment and it was supported, uh, uh, I would say, uh, very widely and, and uh, almost unanimously by our, our planning commission and our county commission. So that's the policy of, uh, of the county from a land use perspective that informed our uh, decisions regarding our PGAs and our uh, rural areas. So this is the, the proposal. Uh, the rural areas are in white. You can see the planned growth areas this time in kind of an orangish shade. Uh, we have significantly reduced the overall amount of planned growth area. Uh, we're showing about 20-25% uh, of what was originally a planned growth area. The areas that we have identified as planned growth areas coincide with areas for which special area plans uh, have been adopted and tailored zoning district standards have been uh, put in place. Uh, those areas are Triune, uh, Leapers Fork, Grassland, and College Grove. Additionally, there are two other smaller areas uh, known as Arrington and Rudderville. Our comprehensive plan recommends that those two areas be converted into villages following that process of, uh, of working on uh, uh, working to create a special area plan with those citizens. So just real quickly, uh, so that fo folks can see individual properties or maybe folks at home, uh, this is the College Grove PGA that coincides with the boundaries of that study area and the zoning district boundaries. Uh, 
this is the Grassland PGA corresponding with the Grassland Village Special Area Plan. Uh, Leaper's Fork, same thing. The boundaries coincide with the zoning out there, which was based on the Special Area Plan. Uh, Triune is, is in the same uh, category. We did hear this morning um, from Mr. Sanford uh, a request to add some properties to this. We were aware of, of that potential. Uh, we're happy to kind of vet that a bit between now and when we come back together in September. Uh, this is the boundary of the Arrington uh, Hamlet that is going to be converted into a village. I will say that, that recently we've heard from someone out there whose property is, is kind of split halfway in, halfway out, that wants to be fully within that boundary. We'll vet that one as well. And then finally, the Rudderville uh, PGA as proposed. We held two public hearings, uh, the first in conjunction with our planning commission on July 13th, uh, the second one on August 14th. At those public hearings, the majority of the comments were unrelated to our specific proposals for planned growth areas. Uh, again, since then and outside of those public hearings, we've heard a couple of requests that I mentioned. And uh, between now and when we get back together on the 19th, we will uh, we'll vet those and, and be prepared to update you on that one. So that's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yes, sir. What's the what's the distinction of a village? What just forget my ignorance, I don't know. Educating on what that means to that area. Yeah. Village versus PGA versus nothing. No. Village is really more of a uh, a zoning district and a and a uh, a category mm -hmm. that our land use plan assigns to areas. Um, we've chosen to and so we've got several of those that are already in place uh, that call for more intense development than the surrounding rural areas. And so those were a natural choice for inclusion in our PGAs. Other questions for Mike? Okay, same, same question with the exception of the one little piece that Mike said they're gonna go back and work on a little bit more. Any, any objections that you're hearing? Uh, and let's go down the list, Brentwood. No, sir. Fairview. No, sorry. Nolansville. No. Franklin. No. Thompson Station. No. Spring Hill. No. County is a yes, obviously. Um, okay. So. We had, I don't know if it's the time to say this. I think I'd like to hear the county weigh in on the request that Franklin has made or our board ask us to advocate for. And you don't need to necessarily do that today because it just, happened fairly recently, but I'd be interested in your perspective on the West Harpeth area that, that our, our that the city of Franklin has removed from its UGB and our board asked that it be stay in the county or be in county um, uh, oversight. And so what that means, and then I, while I'm talking about this, I, I'd just be interested from Thompson Station, what you anticipate in terms of density and growth in, in that parcel you know, what, what are your plans for that? What, should it be in your UGB? I'd just like to understand both sides of that and have that articulated in the board. Yeah, those are, those are very good questions. This is the time to do that. <clears throat> if we get to the point where we can't answer that, that goes into that category of what do we need to do yeah, to get- Yeah, that might be at next meeting. Yeah. I, don't, whatever I don't know if you're the one to try to answer that. Person. Well, I, th I think that probably is a next meeting thing, you know, from a, from a county staff perspective, we've been focusing on our areas and, and not trying to reconcile others. Um, but I think as a city, I mean, as a county contingent in general, we'd be happy to at least uh, discuss that between now and next meeting. Michael, do you wanna, same, same answer? Right, right, okay. So that's, that's that, the, thanks for uh, setting that up, Eric, because that kind of brings us to this, to this point of where do we go from here. So let's just pause for a second and, you know, look at the good news. And that is, I, I, I'm thinking that probably there's consensus on 99% of the territory that we're talking about that we've been working on. And when you consider that seven jurisdictions have been working on that, that's pretty uh, good accomplishment. So let's, let's uh, look at where we've come from that perspective. But here we are, we have some issues that have been put on the table. Um, like I said, I suspect a, a number of you are thinking, I, I don't, I'm not even sure I know what property they're talking about. 
Um, Eric's raising some good questions. What's the county's position on that area? You know, Thompson Station, can you serve it? So the question is, what do we need to do to get this coordinating committee from where it is right now to a point within the next month or so, uh, we've got a little bit of leeway, but the next month or so, to have a plan, and we're talking here about the maps, to, that are, that you're comfortable enough with to take out into your public hearings, and then again, ultimately keeping in mind, you're gonna have to come back and vote as a coordinating committee, and by the way, all of the jurisdictions have to vote on this. We've talked about this before. This has to be a seven jurisdiction and all the other agencies that are involved here consensus. So what do you need as a coordinating committee between let's say now and September? And, it's, and I think there are two questions is what additional information might you want and what kinds of conversations might you want to consider to occur in the intervening time period, okay? So, coordinating committee, the ones with the cards in front of you in particular. Yes, thank you. Let me share this related to the schools. Uh, we, we build where growth occurs, and I think you all know that. Um, one question that I'm gonna be looking to really drill down for our planning is in those UGD areas, what utility services do, do you plan for and what density will be nearby? So when, when there's not sewer, we end up needing to purchase additional land to put plants on, 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 the, on the locations. What we have found just in recent years where the county expanded to five acre tracks, um, it's actually made it a little bit more feasible for us to do that because the density spreads. Uh, so I'm going to be asking some questions about what projected density might we have in some of those expanded UGB areas um, for the next 20 years, what, what we can expect so that we can project out where a school might need to be and how many acres we need so that we can put a plan on it if sewer is not part of Okay, so can we, can, we, <clears throat> can we first of all agree that one of the things that would be helpful as part of this discussion is to have some good maps of the area that show the property that's being talked about here, right? That's kind of a, that's kind of a starting point. So let's start building on that. Jason, what you're saying is what would be helpful for you to understand, and I suspect other people are, can we talk about some of these questions about how will it be served, what kind of utilities might be available, what kind of land uses or densities are being considered in those areas that would be helpful to have in front of us. Good so far? What else? What else do you wanna, do you wanna know and understand? Or again, it seems to me some of you have opened the door, Pam, you opened the door that maybe there's some more discussions that could be held on some of these properties. Well, that was gonna be one of my questions was, uh, if we are willing to say, if this stays in the county and doesn't go to a different UGB, um, how do we propose amending the map to just eliminate an area? Um, I think our board kind of wanted to do that, but didn't know how to go about it and not interrupt this process. Um, so I need a little advice as to what that next step might look like. Okay, so as, say that say that again. If it's if is, we want to take out the northwest piece of right. our urban growth boundary. And right. you're okay with you guys saying, yeah, take that out, leave it in the county. No, and, and no urban service boundary, right? Yeah, no urban growth boundary. Urban growth boundary. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Do we need to propose that? Is that something this body needs to do? What's the process look like to do that? Well, I mean, you've already proposed a set of boundaries. So if you if you go back to your board and say, here's the input we got, we're going to come back with essentially a revised proposal. I think that's up that's in your in your court to do. Ultimately, this group will have to prove it, and it'll go back to you again as part of the overall plan. But if that's if you're saying, you know, there's some potential to go back and take a sharper pen and and work through some of these areas and bring it back, I think that would be the appropriate thing to do. Okay, Christy. Watch the cords here. Be careful. That one will come your way. Yes. These heels all fall on my face. That would be fun. Um, 
Christy Ransom, uh, one of the attorneys for the county. Uh, that That is certainly an appropriate step. If that's something that your board has decided that you want to pursue, then you can take it back. It's also my opinion, and my colleagues are welcome to disagree with me, this coordinating committee's job is to adjust those maps. So if you adjust those maps as a coordinating committee, that's what you're sending out for adoption to the city. So then the cities would have the option of just adopting it because you're cool with it or kicking it back because you're not. In the, given the timing, it seems like we've gone through enough at the city's level. It seems to me like the right approach, and this is obviously I'm not on board, so it's up for you guys to decide, but it seems to me like this committee ought to be making the recommendations to make those changes, and then they go back to the cities for adoption, and um, as opposed to the back and forth, it's just going to prolong this part of it. Right. Well, and I agree, but I'm also going to put it on each city to determine what's best for their, as I've done before, what's best for your own internal processes. But the coordinating committee is empowered to take the presentations and then form a map um, to then eventually be sent back for either adoption or not. Um, and so that's kind of where we are in the process. But if you want to take it back and discuss it with your board and revise your presentation, I think you can. I'd sure like to, if the jurisdiction wants to change, I'd sure like to know that they want to change because this process concludes with the individual cities approving the updated UGB, right? Yes. I want to send something back to them that I don't know they they want <laughs> if we can avoid it. I don't disagree with that, so but we also have to say I'd like to make this alteration. I'd like to know that in this process as opposed to guessing or just sort of taking your word for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I think I'd like to have at least some, maybe it's not as formal, but some indication that that's what that jurisdiction wants, if there's a modification. I don't disagree. The only caveat I would add is, that is the time frame. I mean, we have the six months, and so if you can move with, you know, all due haste, <laughs> then do so, um, because getting this group back together to have these conversations. Um, let me, let me even make this question, ask this question. Do you believe that it would be important for us to have another public hearing as we are amending that? Or could we just pass a resolution supporting the committee's desire to do that? I think that, again, I'm going to, the statute leaves it really up to each jurisdiction. If you feel like you need an additional public comment period in addition to what you've already received, then, then that's what you all choose to do. If you want to use the public comment that you are receiving now and making that decision, again, you all are going to come to at least one consensus first, and then we send that out for public hearings for you all as a committee to hear. So there are still multiple public comment opportunities, whether you decide to add an additional layer to yours. Again, I'm going to leave to you and your legislature to decide. Did that give you? Did that give you what you need, Pam? I think so. Okay, and I and I picking up on on Eric's comment. If, if you're looking for the coordinating committee to make those changes to send them back, you know that's a that's a possible that's a possible path. But we don't want to guess at what might be acceptable to the city, right? Um, but what I am hearing is th th there are additional discussions that you all are ready and willing to have to, to, to refine that. Is that fair? I'm sorry, did you want to uh, say something? I've got a big mouth. Uh, so what, what is your unique microphone? Yeah, the mic's to re <laughs> not just to hear it, to record it. I think this other one's not working. Yeah, it's not working. So this is as much for the people that spoke as for us, but what's is our def what the definition of consensus here? Ultimately, for this coordinating committee, is it a, is it a majority vote, right? Essentially, but that's not the best outcome. No, no, no. But I mean, so, so that's so we could conceivably have uh, a non well have a consensus vote, but just a slight majority. <clears throat> yeah, here's here's a problem with that though. To keep in mind is if if you know, slightly less than half the people on this committee are voting against something, it's going to go back to their jurisdiction for ratification. So that doesn't bode well for... And so if it doesn't get ratified by the jurisdiction, then what happens? Then there's a... Yeah, Christy, thank you. 
Jesus. There's a process. Two years of just pay up here. <laughs> Although getting a workout in. Um, so essentially, when you all have a consensus or you have voted on your plan and your map, you will send it out to the legislatures of all the members. And uh, if one of the entities disagrees with that map, then their action is to reject what's been presented by the coordinating committee with reasons why. Because then you're essentially sending it back to the coordinating committee to consider those comments and see if the coordinating committee will make adjustments. The coordinating committee can choose to make an adjustment and then send it back out to everyone, or the coordinating committee can say, well, no, we're good with what we have. That is not the best case scenario uh, because you essentially have a couple of different opportunities to go back and forth and then you reach an impasse and that's when it kicks over to the state. So we would not like and to get to if, that. If there is a, a, if there's no solution, does it go back to the state and somehow the state decides what that yes. is? I mean, okay. Yes. So that's done by the legislature? No, uh, the LG, the Local Government Planning Advisory Committee will take a look at it first. Um, it, there is also a process to send it to an administrative law judge uh, where that panel makes it for you and then you all get to pay for the cost of that process. So uh, that's a really bad way to go. <laughs> One other question. Uh, we as members, do, do we vote individually? Yes. Uh, so we don't vote as a group. No. We vote individually. Exactly. Okay. Stay close. <laughs> I'm not on the committee. My mayor's on the committee. She asked me to ask the question. <laughs> so, and, and I, 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 let me just carry on. I, I don't want anyone to take offense at this question. Um, but if Spring Hill decides to remove property from the potential UGB and Thompson Station says, oh, well, there's 25 more acres, let's go ahead and add it in the hours. How does this committee? work through that mm -hmm. issue similar this is just it's the same situation as what's occurred with Franklin where you all have uh, taken some out and consultation to ask for it to be put in that seems to be a difficult way for all of us to have to uh, to work through especially when we all have to ratify each other's plans uh, and, and, and uh, it's a challenge so how do we do, how do we get through that um, from from our perspective from, from uh, Nolan's perspective? None of your all's boundaries are in conflict with ours. We've worked ours out with Brentwood, and we're not we don't have any issues with any of that. But we do very much value citizen buy-in, and we hope that that all of those comments that, that the citizens have, have noted as concerns can be resolved. Um, with those entities so that we can fully support everyone's plan. Great. Okay. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mayor, are you in the mic? They're passing it. They're passing it. Like, they're passing it. You do, you do not, so, not just so they can hear, but they'll get recorded. I'm Lisa Anderson. I'm the mayor of the city of Fairview. We're unique in this process. We're in the upper west part of Williamson County, so we don't touch anyone. We don't have a conflict with anyone, so um, we've had our public hearings and our citizens are fine with the way we have um, adjusted our urban growth boundary. But being tasked to make decisions for other municipalities if there is um, a part of say Franklin that they decide that they want to remove and it becomes what is called I guess a donut hole I don't see that as um, the citizens issue that's something that Franklin decided to do which caused that and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if a developer owns a piece of property, they are the property owner and they can ask to be annexed. 
So it's not necessarily the citizens who live there that are asking for the, the annexation. It's a property owner that could be a developer. So I think that's like a fair view with growth. I think that's a concern. Is it a problem for them to just stay in the county? Because since I have to be one of the votes on this, and I as well respect what the citizens have brought today and want to do right by the municipalities, but also the citizens' concerns, I just want to know how, if, you know, why they would not be able to just be allowed to stay in the county. I was <clears throat> following up to that last part. So what did you, uh, could you restate your question? I didn't quite follow what you're asking at the end there. Okay, so if a municipality decides to remove a part of their urban growth boundary, right. why can't that, I know it creates what would be considered a donut hole, but why, why is that a problem for them just to stay in the county? Right. So if they, if the area we're talking about is removed from Franklin's urban growth boundary, does not get picked up by Thompson Station, it would be in outside of an urban growth boundary, which means it would not only, it would be, it would essentially have to be developed under the county's jurisdiction, just like lots of other areas in the county are not in urban growth boundaries. The one, the one nuance, remember for everybody and for everybody out there just trying to try and track this, is that if it's not in an urban growth boundary, the, the communities are agreeing as part of this process, if it goes forward as, as it's been discussed, would agree not to annex that uh, outside the urban growth boundary, even if the property owner came to them and said, I want to be annexed into the community. Does that, does that make sense? You see what I'm saying? So if it's not an urban growth boundary, it would, it would develop, if it developed, it would develop under county zoning. Okay. Right. Is that what you're asking? I really would, um, I think we brought this up, but I would really like to see, especially maps yeah. on the affected areas that the citizens have issues with so that I can make a good vote myself. Right. So I think what we're hearing so far, and I want to keep, keep going with this to see, because I want to make sure we have direction coming out of this. I think what we're hearing, first of all, is y'all just need to know more about these properties, such as where are they on a map. Uh, what's being planned, what, what are the utility uh, kind of policies, and uh, are there additional discussions that can go on, just like Spring Hill has offered to have and, and, and the county has offered to have on one of, the, one of the PGAs, are there additional discussions that can go on to try to resolve these between now and the next meeting? Not just to bring it back to you with other information, but if any of this can be worked out by negotiation and, and, and discussions, it would be helpful to do. Right? Is that, I mean, I think that's what I'm hearing. Yes. yes. Okay. So, a couple of things. One is, um, as I look at the, the big picture of this and understand, I have to get my head around that it's, it's really one landowner that is pushing to get this done in the Thompson Station. Area, is that correct? Mainly a large land. So, so the, the, the kind of the, the thing about this is what happens is that one landowner um, has a huge impact on everybody else. And when you bring them into the urban growth boundary, it gives them an opportunity to do that. It also gives someone else an opportunity to do that. sell a piece of property um, for a lot more than farmland which is different. And it's kind of like gentrification of farmland. And it happens, it's happening in the city of Franklin, down Natchez Trace. It's happening all over this country. That there's gentrification happening where people are taking advantage of property values. Um, I'm not sure that's the right thing to do, quite frankly. Um, and you know, I wasn't, I'm not part of Bowman anymore, and, and I, so I didn't, Get in that discussion, but I totally agree that um, these that one person should change the whole character of of a neighborhood or of an area, and the only way they can do that is if it's if it's in an urban growth boundary. So I think we as a group have to think about that 
has a huge impact on schools without question and, uh, and it has a huge impact on the character and, and all these people are not going to get affected if, even if they are or not their homes won't be affected unless it is an urban growth boundary and unless someone sells their property for denser development and that's probably going to happen uh, because money speaks louder, whether it's a developer or just a human being, the people up and down Natchez have an opportunity to sell their property at a huge increase in value than what they ever thought before. All these families, and they have every right to do that. <coughs> but what we're doing is giving someone a right that they weren't really inherited. That their their right is to have farm and to stay farm. And I'm not sure we should give them uh, that opportunity to to do what they want to do, a, a single landowner to affect that huge amount of the community. Just to pick up on that, um, so Brentwood is a long way away from Austin Station and uh, just Great Hill. Uh, however, we compete for resources uh, countywide. Uh, the majority of uh, our county budget uh, is spent on schools. Uh, higher density uh, means more schools uh, and more competition uh, for those resources uh, for uh, existing schools, new schools that are needed, as well as, uh, as public safety. So one of the things Brentwood has been real intentional about is not upzoning uh, property. Uh, as we have annexed uh, property in from the county, um, we do not uh, upzone it. Not up so uh, at Brentwood uh, either, just because we understand the impact uh, that it has on our infrastructure as well. And so, um, when I hear from uh, our folks in, uh, in Brentwood, um, they want to make sure that we have balanced and responsible growth uh, across the county, uh, not just in Brentwood. Um, we're stakeholders in uh, all of this. We can't control what goes on uh, in other municipalities, um, but we're stakeholders in it. And the more that Rep, uh, the more that we understand that those resources are scarce, um, traffic, schools, sewer, all of those, those type of things, public safety, uh, the better off we are to not overrun uh, that infrastructure. So we would look to not have uh, any upsetting in the GDPs. Uh, is that uh, something that's realistic? <coughs> not all the time. However, the more that we can control that, I think the more that all of the municipalities no, I appreciate those comments. I, I will say that one of the things to keep in mind, if, if y'all go back and look at the county comprehensive land use plan, which really set the stage for all of this, um, you know, there is a tremendous amount of growth forecasted for this county somewhere or other. I mean, the forecast, the forecast, and this is, this is, was widely discussed in the comprehensive plan process. The forecast is that the population in Williamson County as a whole is forecasted to double by the year 20, uh, well, within 20 years double within 20 years. That doesn't mean you have to accommodate all that. I'm just simply saying that's the kind of pressures that are there. Um, and, and I think the, I just don't want to give the impression that by taking areas out, we're going to, we're going to cut that growth out. I mean, the, the growth pressures are there. And I think what's this committee has been wrestling with is trying to coordinate how and where that growth occurs. So, um, I just want, especially the folks to realize that the, the monumental growth pressures that you're facing here and, and how the need to plan for that responsibly is what we're trying to deal with here. Okay, so what else? I, I think this is really helpful for everyone to share your preliminary sentiments. I mean, it's just like any other deliberative body. You are gonna be a deliberative body here at some point. So if you have concerns, you want each other to hear, share those. Um, if there's messages you want to be delivered, deliver those. Anyone else on the coordinating committee? Okay, so yes, Mayor. Hold on, hold on, sorry. Can we get more mics next time? Yeah, we, just, <laughs> we have one here that just doesn't. So one of the concerns, we want to be a good neighbor in Nolensville, and so we recognize that each individual jurisdiction has responsibility for setting the course for your town in terms of urban growth boundary. But where we do share resources, and this was echoed in other comments, mainly around sewer, but police and fire. So the majority of our service delivery in Nolensville is centered around police and fire. 
and we try to be good partners with the county, in particular with fire service, and we serve actually outside of the town of Nolensville. That's a major cost driver for our community. It's a major, in terms of our, our tax dollars. And so with those urban growth boundaries, I hope that each community is looking at how you're providing police and fire as public safety, because as others have shared with schools as well, when that growth comes in Williamson County, it does impact us and the, the scarce resources that come from the county and the, the property tax that, that we have. And I know each of our communities enjoy a, a very um, low property tax in comparison with other jurisdictions, but too much growth will impact that and it will in, end up raising county property tax for schools, but also each of our cities and towns. Thank you. So, seeing no other hands, any other, any other thoughts? Let me, let me try to start to wrap up my portion of this before I turn it back over to the mayor. Um, for the September meeting, let me suggest that what we should be hoping to hear for that is number one, what additional discussions have been had in those areas, right? To resolve, to try to bring resolution to that. And did that result in any changes to your maps that you presented here today, right? Number two is you want to see those properties on maps so you, you, know, you know what you're talking about. And, and you would also hope that for those areas that have been discussed that are in dispute, um, that those communities come back and be prepared to answer some of these questions like, how are we providing services to them? What kind of, what do our comprehensive plans say about them? What, what is the intended future land use? What is the intended density? Is that, is that a fair, fair assessment? Particularly the communities that are on the hot seat? That reasonable? Okay. All right, well, I think, and, and, and other than that, then, um, yeah, Eric, go ahead. I want to try to maybe at the next meeting set the public hearings or at least identify the yes. dates. Yes, yes. Just have that in mind as we look yes. at it. Um, yes, tentatively at least, because remember, it's possible that in September you get to this point and you say, okay, well, we made progress, but we're going to need to come back in October and do it again. Um, we've got until, I think, about... Well, we've got six months from when we started this process to get to the point where it's... We've got to send it off mid-December. Mid-December to yep. send... That, that doesn't mean this process is finished by mid-December. What needs to happen by mid-December is that we've sent them out to the jurisdictions for adoption and another clock starts running. Yes. Right. Good. Any other suggestions? Are we going to get maps before the next meeting so that we can visit those areas, or are we going to have to wait for the next meeting? I knew you were going to ask that. Well, now that you've asked it, then I'll have to say yes, we'll get you those in advance. We will. Yes, we will. Okay. One thing kind of related to that, are we posting the content we saw today? Is that on the website or someplace where we can refer back to it? We are going to have a link, correct? It will go to our county website. It'll be on WCTV's YouTube channel. It'll also be on the uh, growth plan update website off the county channel. It'll take a couple days to get it all together and on there, but it'll be on there. I, I'm Super also just talking about the agenda itself, like the PowerPoints we saw today. Is that yes. some place where we can go back and look yep. at it as a reference as the yep. public can see yep. it as well? Yep. Yep. It, will, it will be. Okay, great. Thank you. And by the way, for anybody who uh, spoke, if you had written comments that you would want to submit, a lot of those we have, and we, we have those here. So if you want to do that, hand it to me. Anything else from the committee? So thank you for being here. Thank so you for Rogers giving just, up. I had a quick, just a very quick update on the interlocals. Okay. Quick update on the interlocals. Very quick. Very quick. I promise. Promise. <laughs> really, really promise. So just to let you all know, the attorneys have all been meeting regularly. We have... Um, worked really well together. Y'all are so well represented. I mean, I gotta tell you. Um, so we have come up amongst us uh, with a, a draft that we're all good with to then send out um, to our clients. So we're gonna start sharing that widely with our clients individually from your own attorneys. Um, but it covers you know, the, the three big topics that we've been talking about, the no annexation outside the UGBs, the every five years, the advisory committee, um, with some other you know lawyerly stuff that <laughs> we throw in there. Um, so you should be receiving that really soon, but I wanted to 
basically thank your attorneys for working so well together. It's been a pleasure. So thanks. And all those PowerPoints we'll put on the county website. Do you want links to go to your individual cities? We can provide that too. I see some heads knocking, nodding. Okay. So we will, as soon as Creed gets that done, he's very efficient, but I'm sure it's still, but this is a lot of material covered this morning and coordinating all that, but we'll get that. Anything else? Thank you very much. Very difficult chore we're doing here. Uh, first time we have had to do it in over 20 years. So we don't take this lightly and it is a journey. Very few counties um, go down because it is so difficult to do. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, John. We're going to be the 19th of September. The 19th of September. Make sure it's either 8 or 9 because some of us got confused. Was that because it was on Eastern Standard or Central Standard? Just because I'm stupid, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> we, let me go ahead and say it now. We will do 9 a.m. at Central Standard Time. We'll try to have some mics. Uh, that are performing a little better so we don't have that delay. Anything else? Thank you. I'll entertain a motion, the final motion. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn.